In this video, we're going to talk about writing a polynomial function with rational coefficients and the given zeros. But before we do that, the first thing we want to talk about is this irrational conjugates theorem. What this tells us is that if our polynomial just has rational coefficients, now remember rational means like a ratio of an integer divided by an integer. We don't have any irrational coefficients like square root of 7 or square root of 3, something that can't be write, written as an integer over an integer. Then what happens if you have an irrational zero, then you're also going to have its conjugate. So for example, if I had 3 plus the square root of 2 as a zero, then I also have 3 minus square root of 2. So for this first example, we've got negative 4 as a zero, 3 plus square root of 2 is a zero. So we also know that 3 minus square root of 2 has to be a zero. We have to have that conjugate pair. Now notice we're just changing the sign in between these two terms. So if this was minus, this would be plus. Okay, now we know that these are our zeros, and there's a connection between the zeros and what we call the factors of the polynomial. The factors are always going to be x minus the zero. So this is like x minus negative 4, which is like x plus 4, x minus 3 plus square root of 2, and x minus uh, 3 minus root 2. Now, what exactly is a zero? Well, a zero, we know, is an x-intercept. And the reason they call it a zero is because the y-coordinate is zero. You're not going up or down. You're right on that x-axis. So that's the key. Now all we have to do is multiply this out. This is the more challenging part of the problem, but I'm going to show you some tips to make it a little bit easier. First, we're going to distribute this negative into the parentheses. So that's going to give us x minus 3 minus square root of 2. Distribute this negative into the parentheses, x minus 3 plus square root of 2. I'll have another example that you can, uh, you can do on your own after this if you want to practice. Then what we're going to do is we're going to group these x minus 3s together like so. And what this gives us, it gives us a sum and difference pattern. We've got x minus 3, we've got square root of 2, but one we're subtracting, one we're adding. What's interesting, if you know how to work with a difference of two squares, like for example, a squared minus b squared, you'll know that this is factors to a plus b times a minus b. And the reason this works is because a times b and negative a times b cancel. That's why we don't have a middle term. It cancels out, right? So similarly over here, the inside product and the outside product are going to cancel. We're just going to end it with x minus 3 times x minus 3, which you could write this as x minus 3 squared. A negative root 2 times a positive root 2 is negative 2. A negative times a positive is a negative. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2, but we get a negative 2. Now, the mistake you don't want to make, some students uh, just kind of say, well, oh, this is x squared plus 9. You know, they just square both of these. When you have a binomial squared, you want to think of it as you've got two of these, like x minus 3 times another x minus 3. So if you multiply this out, you get x squared. Uh, minus 3x minus another 3x plus 9 minus this 2 here. So now if we combine like terms, we get x squared minus 6x plus 7, and it's multiplied by this factor here, x plus 4. So all we have to do now is multiply these together. So let's take x times x squared. That's x cubed. Then we have x times negative 6x, which is negative 6x squared. Uh, x times 7 is 7x, and if we distribute the 4, we get 4x squared. 4 times negative 6x is negative 24x, and 4 times 7 is 28. And all we have to do is add these together, and I'll put the answer over here. So we've got our function, which is uh, f of x equals x cubed, uh, negative 6x squared plus 4x squared is negative 2x squared. Okay, and then we've got a 7x minus 24x, which is a negative 17x and plus 28. And that's your polynomial function. Notice that the coefficients, the numbers in front of the variables, they're rational, like they're, they're uh, integers divided by integers. So you have 1 or negative 2, negative 17, square root of 20, or 28. You don't see any square roots like square root of 5 or square root of 7. Those are not in our polynomial function. And the reason is, is because we have these zeros as conjugate pairs. 
So let's take a look at another example. You can pause the video and practice this one on your own. Okay, our zeros are seven and negative two plus root three. How would you do this one? Well, if I was gonna do it, the first thing that I would do is recognize that if this is a zero, negative two plus root three, negative two minus square root of three would also be a zero. This is what's referred to as the conjugate pair. Pair means two, conjugate, we're just changing that sign in between the two terms. Don't wanna make the mistake of making this plus two, it's just the sign in between that we're changing to the opposite. Then we, remember, we wanna write our factors which are gonna be x minus our zeros. So I say x minus the quantity negative two plus root three, and x minus the quantity negative two minus root three. Okay, now we're gonna distribute the negative into the parentheses, okay, for both of these. And so we're getting x plus two minus square root of three, and x plus two plus square root of three. Now remember that little trick that I showed you, you can group these x plus twos together, think of it as like a group, and we've got a sum and difference pattern. x plus two is in common, the square root of three is in common, but it's that uh, sign in between, okay, that's uh, different. So what happens is the inner product and the outer product are gonna cancel, because they're the same, but one's positive, one's negative. And then we get x plus two times x plus two, which is x plus two squared, okay, so let's write that, minus square root of three times square root of three, which is just gonna give us three. So this is square root of nine, which is three, negative times the positive is a negative. Remember, x plus two squared is x plus two times x plus two, which gives us x squared plus four x plus four minus three. If you're not sure, write this twice, x plus two times another x plus two and distribute and FOIL that out. So now this simplifies to x squared plus four x plus one, and it's multiplied by this binomial or this factor, x minus seven. So we're gonna distribute the x to all three. Let's see, what does that give us? x cubed plus four x squared plus x, and now we're gonna distribute the negative seven to each term, so negative seven x squared minus 28 x minus seven. And if we combine like terms here, Let's write our final answer over here. So our function is gonna look like f of x equals x cubed, four x squared minus seven x squared is negative three x squared, one x minus 28 x is negative 27 x, and we're left with negative seven. So that's our polynomial function with rational coefficients. Notice we don't have any irrational coefficients like square root of three or square root of five. These are all uh, ratios of integers divided by integers, and you got it. So Great job, I hope you're able to follow this uh, video. If you wanna see more examples about working with polynomials, I'll put a video talking about a similar type of problem but working with the uh, imaginary zeros or complex zeros. Follow me over to that video right there and we'll dive into that concept, I'll see you there.